Welcome guys, today I'm going to talk about the absolute best case scenario for Democrats in 2022 and let's finally start in this scenario. Democrats would be in an amazing position in the Senate due to a good economy, comeback, good ratings, and uh, more. So let's begin with the solid blue Senate seats. In this scenario, they would be uh, Washington, Oregon, California, Hawaii, of course, Illinois, all of these uh, old school Democrat states, uh, Connecticut and Maryland. And of course, uh, John Ossoff's seats right here. All of these states are going to be safe for Democrats. And even in a midterm with a uh, Democrat Joe Biden as president, they would still go for them by over 15%, which is the threshold needed to be a safe state. On the other hand, for these solid red states, those would be Idaho, Utah, uh, typical red states like North Dakota, South Dakota, uh, Kansas, yep, Oklahoma, Arkansas, uh, Louisiana, these really uh, deep red states, Indiana, Kentucky, Alabama, and South Carolina. Uh, not much here to expand, but the only one that might drop could be a state like Indiana or maybe South Carolina if there's a decent or good candidate. But even then, it's still going to vote for Republicans by like 14% or 15% at least. So as you can see, in this case, uh, Democrats would have 45 seats versus 42 for the Republicans in the solid state baseline for both parties. Moving on, getting more interesting for the likely uh, seats. Uh, let me start with the first uh, blue one uh, for Democrats between 5 to 15 percent. That would be, and the only one would be Colorado. Okay, so Colorado for a while since uh, the early 2000s has been trending blue and bluer and uh, even though it has had a history of sending republicans to dc in the house and, and the senate but in this case uh, due to the inter-country migration from like bluer cities it would be a, around 12 percent to 14 percent for democrats and i just can't i just don't see it be more than 15 percent even though some people have said that it is a possibility but even in the blue wave year i just can't see it going by that high of a margin uh, While well, for the likely GOP, they are, uh, first of all, Alaska. In Alaska, Lisa Murkowski uh, will face a lot of opposition from like a Trump candidate. And Trump and his fan base and most of the Republican Party wants to get rid of her. But even if, let's say, uh, Trump is successful at priming her, of course, she will run again as an independent or as a writing candidate, as she did in 2010, and will likely probably win here due to the Democrats of deciding to vote for her instead of the Trump candidate. Overall, there's a lot of scenarios for her here, but I would say probably going to be 10 to 12 percent for Lisa Markowski. Now for Iowa, there has been a lot of talk about having a new Republican candidate since uh, instead of Chuck Gracely, who would be 89 years old in 2022. But no matter what happens, there are going to be a, a lot of candidates for Republicans even if he retires, uh, it would go for the GOP by 12-14%, just below that safe state uh, threshold. Okay, now for Missouri, the incumbent uh, Roy Blunt will retire. Uh, also, there has been a lot of talk of Democrats putting more effort here to try to make a good run. But even if they put like a good or famous candidate, like, I don't know, like a Matt Caskill, Missouri would still vote for Republicans since there's just more votes here. and. They're going to vote only for one party through and through since voters just don't like voting back and forth between two parties as um, they used to back 20, 40 years ago. Now for Ohio, uh, Rob Portman has announced that he will not seek re-election in 2022 due to the fact that he just doesn't like uh, how partisan politics are. And whoever the candidate is, is going to vote Republican. It's no longer a swing state like it used to be 8 uh, to 12 years ago. And it's probably going to vote for uh, Republicans and whoever the candidate is by like 12, 14 percent. There's still a lot of minorities here compared to like Iowa. But even if you have a high turnout, it's not going to be that big at most 10 percent, 11 percent. I just don't see it. OK, as you can see, all of this would mean that the solid and likely state baseline would be 46 for Democrats and 46 for Republicans on this blue wave scenario. OK, so. Here's where things begin to get really uh, tight and competitive. Okay, so let me start with Florida. Uh, Florida is really interesting to look at a lot, both presidential, Senate, and even the House level. No matter who the candidate is, who is probably going to be Marco Rubio or maybe Ivanka, but I don't think she wants to run yet. Florida will certainly vote Republican, probably around at 
Even in the blue wave scenario, it would be like 4%. And even though in 2018 it was a really close race, I think it was the closest race in 2018 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it was. I just don't see that happening again. I just don't see Democrats being able to lower that margin really. Now for New Hampshire, a uh, state to really keep an eye on. Uh, Chris Sununu, the Republican governor, might run in 2022. And the best case scenario for Democrats, he would either not run at all or just uh, something else would happen that would make his margin of popularity uh, go down. Since that would be the only way Democrats could win here by like 2 to 3%. And let's say if he does run, then I'm going to change uh, this to probably like a lean red or I don't know mm, this is a blue wave scenario so I'm gonna put it as a lean margin by like three percent but if, it, if he's gonna run it's a totally different story for another video so up next with uh, Arizona with migration benefiting Democrats by a lot from uh, other big cities and as long as the Arizona GOP puts a bad candidate like uh, Martha McSally again or someone similar to her they will of course lose again and with Mark Kelly, you know, he is a pretty good candidate for Democrats, and he will be probably have a he will probably have an easy time in re-election as long as that uh, approval ratings for Democrats are doing good. And I would probably see him winning in this scenario by like two percent. Uh, well, in Nevada, in normal elections, it would be a, like a stagnant state to look at. Uh, but if the economy is doing well and Republicans only put like an okay candidate, just like an regular one. And Democrats uh, and Cortez Masto would inevitably win here by like four, three percent, as long as that you know the state legislature and the Democratic uh, socialist here don't uh, mess things up. Of course, that could change things by a lot. But another thing that could happen is, let's say Brian Sandoval, uh, who was the former governor of Nevada, runs, and I will probably put this uh, in my regular Senate prediction probably as like a lean red i would not be surprised but if he does run then that's gonna be for the next video or the next one after that one but in this case i would give democrats a four percent win which is probably you know or three percent as seen in 2020 election they won here by 2.8 okay now for pennsylvania depending on who are the candidates here of both parties since republican incumbent uh pat toomey another one is retiring I do believe that out of all these seats, this will be the by far the easiest one for Democrats to flip. In a rare blue wave scenario during a midterm, uh, this would either be a lean or a tilt state, but I think it would be a lean. There's a lot of media spotlight and many people are interested in who are running here, which is going to make a really uh, state you're going to hear a lot and uh, you should keep an eye on this one too. Uh, lastly, for Georgia and Raffler Warnock's seat, as long as Democrats are doing okay approval ratings and economy and all that sort of stuff, and are also able to have a big turnout similar to 2020, I do believe that he will get reelected by like 2% in the blue wave scenario. And Republicans really, really need to send in a good candidate, or else they won't win here in the future. But I'll keep an eye on Georgia since. If you look at Georgia, Pennsylvania, and New Hampshire, you can pretty much look at what's going to happen in 2022. So for North Carolina, uh, this state has uh, lost some of its Republican essence over time slowly. And with a blue Democratic wave with high minority turnouts, uh, similarly to like 2008 Obama, are they able to do something like that? I don't think that would happen, but let's just say hypothetically with high minority turnout, combined with good approval rating and all those things I've said, I do think they could flip this just barely with a good candidate since uh, incumbent Richard Burr, uh, the Republican here, is retiring as well. And you're going to see a lot of people from the Republican Party that are retiring since they just don't like politics anymore. And they're going to be replaced by a Trump candidate almost 100% of the time. Okay, so for the last one, for Wisconsin, uh, the incumbent, another incumbent, uh, Republican Senator, Bron Johnson, uh, is likely going to retire as well and not run, but in a blue wave year, uh, this would be the only chance and way that Democrats could win here. And in this scenario, both Wisconsin and North Carolina would only go for Democrats by less than 1%. But a normal election, these two would 
and uh, others probably would flip or go for Republicans. And uh, yeah, uh, as you can see, this 2022 midterm blue wave scenario, Democrats would win and keep the Senate with 53 seats for them versus 47 for the GOP. And as long as Democrats are able to field uh, good candidates and uh, good campaigns and the economy is doing well, their approval ratings are up, uh, and they have okay to good turnout similar to like 2020, they can keep the Senate at least for until 2024 since uh, if you look at the map in 2024, it's actually uh, really favorable for Republicans. So for the House in this scenario, I don't know what would happen. Uh, only thing I know that as of 2020 and 2021, uh, the House races were really bad for Democrats, and uh, they would really need almost a miracle to keep them in 2022, since it's the slimmest margin in over like 15 years. Regular midterm, it's probably going to go for Republicans. I would certainly think so, unless something big happens within the party that would make it so that Democrats somehow keep the House in 2022. But who knows? You know, a lot of stuff can happen between now and the midterms, really. And yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you guys for watching uh, this video. This was my blue wave and best case scenario for Democrats in 2022. Uh, midterm Senate analysis. Uh, please like, uh, subscribe, and share. And see you next time. Bye.